I'm Gabby and I am a wet and wet oil painter and today I'm going to do a lesson on how to paint canvas tents. No, not painting on the tents, but painting tents in your picture. Now, why would you want to paint canvas tents in your picture? Well, if you do little things like little cabins or little barns and you sort of want something that's just different, little canvas tents are very homey and they're very um, unique. And canvas tents sort of hold a special place in my life because I am a historical reenactor and I have spent uh, more than half of my life um, around these canvas tents, living, not living all the time, but uh, camping in these canvas tents. Um, and so they're really special to me. And I also take my painting along with me when I do my historical reenactors. And a lot of my reenacting friends that purchase my paintings would like to see more canvas tents in mine. So I've spent the last couple weeks really working on how to perfect the shading on these tents. I'm gonna do this in a three-part series. I'm going to do three different types of tents. One is an A-frame, which is what we'll start with today. The other is a wall tent, and then the last is a teepee. And this episode is really important to watch first, the whole way through, because I'm really gonna talk about the colors and the shading. And then when I get into the other tents, I'm not going to spend as much time talking about those things. So come along with me. I hope that it is informative, and I hope it's something that you guys try. I definitely wanna hear in the comments um, how it goes for you, so stay tuned. Here I have the three tents that we're going to do. Now, like I said, we're only doing the A-frame first, and I'm going to zoom into this more so you guys can see this closer as I do this, but this is an A-frame, this is a wall tent, and this is a teepee. And these are just completely dry canvases. Now, you can do this in your wet and wet painting. Basically, what you would do is either draw it, um, you know, a, sim a simple shape out first, and then sort of leave that area blank. Otherwise, you could, you know, paint, I guess, the stuff that's behind it first, and then sort of wipe out this area, and then work on it. So let's come into the A-frame and then we will get going on this. So this thing here is an A-frame. The reason we call it an A-frame is because it's shaped like an A. And these are usually sort of military pup tent sort of tents. And um, they were very common in, you know, 17th, 18th, 19th century and are still used today in many sorts of um, reenactments, whether it's Civil War, Revolutionary War. I think they use them for the Revolutionary War um, up through what I do, which is called the fur trade. Um, and then obviously the Civil War comes after that. And I'm going to show you the colors that we're going to use, the brushes we're going to use and the medium we're going to use. So first of all, we're going to use a lot of paint thinner. Now, the paint thinner I use is called Gamsol. And you can use whatever paint thinner you want. I love Gamsol. I highly recommend it. The brushes that we're going to use is we are going to use a liner brush, not so much for this one as much as we'll be using that for the other ones. Um, and then we're going to use flat brushes, okay? And I have an angle brush in here too, but basically just flat brushes. So the one recommendation that I have for this is just to make sure that you have some good, crisp, um, nice, flat, flat brushes. Um, if you're looking for a good flat brush or a good brush in general, I love my Princeton Aspens and I always try to tell people that because they really are my favorite brushes. Now as for colors, forgive me, I have a leaky one that's sort of on the side here. So over here I have Indian yellow and then I have yellow ochre. This is unbleached titanium white, white, burnt umber, and then ultramarine blue. Um, the other color I didn't put on here is burnt sienna. Okay, I got some burnt sienna. I had realized that I forgot that. Where is it? There it is. There's our burnt sienna. So um, we're going to use those colors in certain places. Now you don't have to have all of these colors. I do recommend for sure that you have ultramarine blue, that you have burnt umber, that you have white, and that you either have some yellow ochre or Indian yellow um, to go along with our burnt sienna. So we're gonna do our A-frame. The first thing we need to do is we need to think about which direction the light is coming from. Now, again, you guys will see, I haven't painted anything around the background. Um, if you wanna know how to um, draw one of these, you can look it up, they're very simple. It's just basically um, an A, and some of them are more right triangles, or not right triangles, sorry. Some of them are more equilateral sort of triangles. And then on um, the back side of a sort of a rectangle. And they, they go from sizes where all you can do is crawl in through them to this beam being 10 to 12 feet high. So they really vary in size. But size doesn't really matter in our picture. What does matter is color. So our light is going to come from this direction for this picture. And for each one of the pictures that I end up doing, I'm gonna have light coming from different directions. Um, but this one, the light's gonna be hitting the front. And then, so this is gonna be a warmer color up here. And then this is going to be a um, cooler color back here. So we're gonna start with a cooler color. So what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to take one of your flat brushes and you're gonna to need to dip it in your paint thinner. And then I'm gonna put some paint thinner in a spot and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of that burnt umber and a little bit of that ultramarine blue. And we're going to bring those two colors together and make them as thin as water. Okay, really, really thin. 
And then once we have that really thin paint, we're going to do some sort of underlaying, sort of a wash on this area that we need dark. So we'll come through and just fill it in. And it is very, very thin, which is what we're going for. Now, when you get started on this process, make sure that you're not going to get sort of interrupted in it because when you lay this down, you're going to have to do something else to it right away. So it's just something to keep in mind. And again, if you have some paint that's already um, on this, go through with like a tissue and wipe it off first because you need this area to be um, as dry as possible. I have a board underneath here and it's got a little dent in it. It's weird. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take little bits of paper towels, okay? So you will be using some paper towel in this process. Not a big deal that it's going running down the canvas. We'll just wipe it off. And there is a fair amount of wiping in this process. So if you have painted around the background, just be ready to know that you're going to have to do some cleaning up after, after um, you're done painting your tent. So what we're going to do is, since we have that wash on there, we're gonna go right back over and we're gonna wipe it off. The reason that I bring in the ultramarine blue is because it's not a strong blue, but it's a very cool blue. Okay, so now we sort of have that one color on there. Um, and I'm going to use different flat brushes. That first brush that I use is going to be kept for my Burnt Umber Ultramarine Blue concoction. So I'm gonna grab another flat brush. Probably should have started with a smaller one on that. Um, I should have saved the smaller one for this side, but it's not a big deal, as long as they're small enough to use. So here's my next flat brush. And this guy is going to get paint thinner on him. And then I'm going to take a little bit of Indian yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. If I can show you guys down here. And I'm going to make that same sort of wash that I made with our other two colors. to put on to our tent. Now, depending on how big or how small your tents are and how far away they are, they do not have to be any sort of detailed whatsoever. If they're closer, obviously you're gonna to wanna to put some more detail in them, and so I'll show you a little bit more of that. I would never paint a tent this big in my picture, um, unless I'm like specifically painting a piece for a, a customer. But I wanted to make it nice and big so you guys could actually really get a good eye onto what we're doing. Okay, we're gonna wipe that off. And then there's our two basic colors. Now, if you do this and you feel like it's a little bit too um, orangey, you can come back with a little bit more um, either yellow ochre or Indian yellow. The difference really between um, Indian yellow and yellow ochre is Indian yellow is transparent, yellow ochre is not. But if you want to sort of golden it up, you can add a little bit more of that to that, okay? But make sure that you then come back through and you wipe off that excess paint. And this will become important and apparently important in a second when we start laying on other color. This is not exactly a wet and wet sort of style of painting, but as you progress in your painting, one thing you will find is that you can sort of start to bring traditional methods of painting and sort of different techniques in with your wet and wet painting. And there's nothing wrong with that, nothing at all. Okay, so now we have our colors laid out and obviously there's little smears around the outside, not a big deal, something you can easily cover up when the time comes to do so. Now I have my two dirty brushes. I'm going to have one more flat brush for sure. And that flat brush that I'm going to have is going to be for white. Now, if you do this and you look at it and you're like, I feel like it's just not dark enough or cool enough, definitely come back in. Um, what I'm gonna do before I actually add in um, the white is I'm gonna take a little bit more of that burnt umber and um, ultramarine, uh, ultramarine blue, okay? And it's not quite as thin this time. And I'm going to make some just sort of lines that sort of swoop downward, gently, not big swoops, as you can see. And then I'm gonna come back over and I'm going to wipe them off. But I made them um, with less paint thinner so that they actually stick out, okay? You can make it so your tent is sort of really tight um, which a lot of times our tents are. However, they look a lot more realistic in pictures if you make them sort of relaxed and have some sort of swoops and lines and stuff in them. 
Okay, awesome. So now we have the base of our tent. And I lied, we're gonna do one more thing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same um, burnt umber, burnt sea, or burnt umber and ultramarine blue, and I'm gonna make a vertical line up and down. You're gonna find it doesn't go the whole way to the top because they don't. If our tent doors went the whole way to the top, what would happen is they would end up tearing. Not that you guys need to know the anatomy of a tent, but you're gonna get some of that in this process because again, canvas tents are one of my passions. Okay, so now we have the basing of our tent, okay? Our triangle door, this warm color here, the cool color here with some dips, really important that we know where our light's coming from. If you were painting a tent and it was the middle of the day, it would be a lot less dark and a lot less uh, differentiated in color. But as I usually don't paint midday, we're not going to paint midday. And it's nice to sort of have some difference. A lot of these tents when they start out are very, very light colored, but they are not white. They are never white. They're sort of a very light off white. And then as they get used and exposed to smoke and exposed to dirt and stuff, they yellow over time. So on my brush here, okay, I have a flat brush and it has white on it. Um, and then it has some unbleached titanium white. You don't have to have the unbleached. You could add just a little bit of browns to it um, just to give it a little bit of color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint over the top of the stuff that I've put. Now in this picture, you will see that I have lines that are drawn. If you are doing this on a picture, what I suggest is that you try very hard not to have dark lines like this, or you blend them into the background because nothing in this world really has strong outlines on it. You can cover up a little bit of pencil lines with oil paint and the thinner does do a good job at sort of breaking down the, the graphite in the pencil, but it doesn't cover it up completely. Okay, so there we have that. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab a little bit of that dark umber, umber blue color and I'm just gonna do some swipes this direction. Okay, and let me show you the swipes. They are, you're starting flat and then you're going over but I'm dropping down just a smidge when I'm doing it because it's giving it sort of the sags to the, the door. All right, now we'll take more of that white with some other light color. Like I said, I'm using the unbleached. And then I'm going to fill this in. And other than doing like sort of the outlines on the edges, I'm going along with the canvas in this sort of horizontal pattern. And the amount of white that you put over the top of this is really gonna depend on how dark you want that canvas to look. Okay. And then I'm going to come back over since I have this major pencil line in here and I'm going to cover that up with white. Anytime you paint any cabins, barns, tents, anything like that, really, really important that you um, start smaller because they tend to grow in size as you paint them. Just something to sort of keep in mind, okay? You will find too, as you go through this process, that sometimes you end up losing some detail because obviously we're putting layers of paint over. So I'm gonna come back in and I'm just gonna sort of darken up those shadowy lines that we had. Okay, now on top of those shadowy lines, I'm going to take white, like white, white, and I'm gonna put lines above them so that we sort of have our wrinkles. I have one more flat brush that I'm gonna use, and this one is not going to be getting paint on it. It's going to be completely dry. And just like how we sort of blend in a sky once we are you know, kind of done with it and we're gonna just tie it together. We're gonna do the same thing with our tent. Okay, so that's that side. Now we have our front side. If you do this and you feel like it's um, too yellow or you wanna highlight certain parts, you can come back in with more of that white mixture that we were using.
Now these tents are held up by wooden poles. A-frame tents are usually on the inside of the tent. A lot of times you don't see them. However, if you want to add a little bit of flair or pizzazz to them, I'll show you how to do that. So I can just take some of that burnt umber and we'll put a pole right over the top of it. So just run right along the top edge of that. And it's going to stand, extend out past the top, okay? Now think of this as sort of like painting a tree, right? The more shadow sided areas are gonna be darker. And you could do this with a knife too, by the way. And we'll just create a little bit of interest to this by just adding in a few different colors. All right, now obviously that pole doesn't sit there by itself. Sometimes they'll have poles that sit like this on the outside and then they'll have just a vertical pole that goes up and down or they'll have two poles that cross and they'll run right along the edges of the um, door but they'll extend out a little bit further. They don't, they don't always run exactly along with it so you can make them a little bit longer. Now this pole is going to disappear behind, okay? And then it'll come up and cross and then we'll come right along here. And this guy is gonna come underneath here. So we'll be able to see the whole thing. And then you would do the same thing on the back side of the tent. This guy will come out here. And then this guy, you have to sort of put in your imagination. Okay, he comes here. And then you'll disappear. And there you guys have it. It's very, very simple. Figure out how to draw them. And then ultramarine blue, burnt umber, do a wash, wipe it off, and then so that it's a cool color here and it's a warmer color here. Quite simple. And then put more detail in the poles if you want to. Again, if it's further away, you can do this much smaller and keep it more simple. So that's it. I wanted to keep that as simple as I could. If you guys have any questions or comments, if you want to put them in the comment section of the video, I will answer it. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Gabby. Um, and until next time, I really do hope that you fall in love with oil painting just as much as I have. Make sure that you guys watch episodes two and episodes three because there's going to be some important stuff in there too. Bye guys.